Hello and welcome. Recently, as you may be able to tell here, I've been experimenting with water, and as a result of that experimentation, I've found a few interesting ways to transport items and other entities, but mostly items, horizontally through your Minecraft space, without needing to resort to doing the whole eight blocks of water, and then a step down, and then another eight blocks, etc. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. The first thing we're going to be taking a look at is raising the bar, ignore the pun, on a single water source block so that it travels a distance of 11 before stopping rather than its original 8 blocks before stopping. And it may not be particularly useful for you or anyone's mechanical devices, but I find it very interesting, and if you're anything like me, you might find it interesting too. If you don't like the dry, uninteresting mathy bits, then perhaps you can just skip ahead using the time code that I will be including in the description for you to click. Now on to the boring mathy bits. I find it interesting because at every crossroads the difference between the length from our original source block here which we will be boosting to these sort of booster channels increases by one. And so we have them all marked out, all of our source blocks with diamond blocks except for the last lazuli block because it doesn't really serve the purpose that all the others do. So we have our block here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 spaces. And what's interesting is that here we have one two spaces from this crossroad and one space from this cross. So the difference between this and this is one space. And then from there to here is five spaces and from here one two three spaces. So the difference between five and three is two. So we have a difference of one, a difference of two, and then over here eight spaces this way and then from here, one, two, three, four, five. So our difference is eight minus five and three. So we have a difference of one, two, and three. And it's really interesting because this is really how you have to do it. If you put the water source blocks for our boosters any closer, for example, here, I'll even demonstrate that, I suppose. The water goes a bit wonky and you see that the water comes down and instead of immediately turning to the right and boosting the source, it actually turns to the left as well and sort of inhibits its progress. Waters that or items or other entities that enter this will simply get stuck. So if we just delete that bit and then move it back into place, we can see that our source is extended. And I should probably give a bit of a demonstration here. If we do that, we remove a block, that, remove a block, and that, remove another block. So there we have it, it goes its normal eight spaces, but if we set up our booster channels, it's boosted to 11, and then our last bit would normally do the same thing if the water could be extended any, any further, but since this is its limit, all it does is simply go off to the left, and you can just continue it however you want after that. So it's just something I find rather interesting, and I'll give a quick test to show you how it works, provided I don't throw all the items on the side. And at the end, I should have 64 redstone. Now, it doesn't matter which side you place your booster channels, provided that you don't have any holes to disrupt the flow. And they have to be placed at the same intervals. Because again, as you saw, it kind of derped a bit whenever you put the source blocks too close. And the same thing occurs if you put them at odd intervals as well. So there you have it, 64 redstone, and we can move on now. Now there are ways to make items and other entities move indefinitely through water without needing to resort to the traditional step down method where you go eight spaces, step down, and then continue it until you reach your destination, or without using pistons and redstone bits, although that is very interesting I find as well. Now one way to do that is to use a diagonal strip of water sources with each source separated by two signs, one on each side. I've chosen signs around the edge because they're awesome, not many other reasons. And it's great for things like boats, but not so great for things like items. And I'll show you why. And that's because if your items are appropriately compressed, some of them will usually get stuck. So you'll see here, we got a couple bits of redstone that are getting stuck there. And in the end, we don't have our full amount going to our detector at the end with a little indicator light. We've missed seven. We've lost seven in a total of just... I don't know, 10, 15 or so. So it's not particularly good for items. However, I found it's useful at least in single player, maybe not in SMP where boats are extremely fragile, but I found it useful for boats because you can set a boat down on the original source and it'll stay there permanently until you get in and then it'll immediately take off. Kind of weird, but I like it. And then it'll smash, of course, if you have something in the way. 
But there you go. Not very good for SMP if you have a lot of things in the way. And maybe boats will act differently in SMP and it may not work regardless. But it's rather interesting. And of course, if you want to go straight, the same thing works. Just with the sign directly in front instead of off to the side. And you can jump in and it immediately takes off. Really great. But again, boats are fragile in SMP. So you may not want to try it. Now, if you want to transport items, it's a little bit of a different story. Undoubtedly, the best way to transport items in single player or multiplayer is to use ice with some water streams above it. And you can use signs to separate the water streams, or you can simply place a hole down, place the water, and then fill in the hole until, you, until it gets to the end. That'll make sure it stays straight and doesn't interfere with the rest of your channels. Now, if we throw some items in the side here, we can see it goes really fast. But what if you don't have access to ice? That's a problem we're going to be solving. So what I've devised is a snaking channel system which basically compresses items as they reach transitions. So we have a water stream here and once it, once it reaches its maximum length it gets a bit of a point going to it. And that point is used to transition the items in a diagonal manner until we get to the next transition which will have them transition diagonally again. And you can go however direction, whatever direction you want, but I chose to make it a sort of snake pattern to keep the channel more straight. Now, the problem that we have to solve is the items getting stuck like we showed back there. And we can compress the items by simply placing some fences on the sides at intervals. So the problem with using normal blocks to compress items along the sides is that if we were to place a block here, then throw items in like this, the point is gone. It will go directly straight now and get stuck right there. And the same thing would happen anywhere along our transitions. And if we were to put a fence here and here, it would be the same as doing that and items would be completely stuck. But luckily, because fences don't obstruct water above them, however, they do obstruct items that flow through that water above them, we can use them, at least in the current version, to block items and compress them into a nice fine line so that they transition smoothly. So by doing so, any items that we throw on the right side here will be compressed back into the center and then any items on the left will be compressed a bit to the right so that they transition smoothly. Now if we throw a bunch of items to test this out, some on the left, some on the right, some in the middle, we'll find that they are all neatly compact in the end in a straight line. And they seem to transition nicely. So there you go. Once they get to this one, they are compressed on the left this time rather than the right, and then they're compressed on the right. Then they continue to flow down until they reach their destination, at which point I should have 64 redstone back. Fairly simple detection system with a nice indicator, using pressure blade and a couple lamps. And there you go, 64 redstone. Completely straight, with a little bit of a bend to it, but the actual item flow is fairly straight and it should save a bit of space since you don't have to go down your levels. The only problem is to make sure that you have one level below for your fences to sit up appropriately and make sure that your fences are actually surrounded by solid blocks. Otherwise, they'll have the corners available for items to fall through and you don't want that. So uh, that should be about it. I'm sorry this video took too long to post, but it turns out Persona 3 is a vortex of life suck super magical that not even light can escape. And I will see you next time.